What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Poco F5 5G and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM. This is the 22nd August 2023 build and this one does include the Leica camera but let me tell you the Leica camera has been implemented a few updates ago and it was kind of buggy I would say earlier there was no Leica camera and stuff but right now at least we do have one and if you don't know how to flash this particular ROM on your Poco F5 you can check out the flashing guide from the description. Now in the about section we have the Evolution X logo up top still the android version shows as android 13 and the evolution x version shows as 797 pinup bit and this is the official build the security patch is latest of august 5th 2023 that you are getting here and the stock kernel is the 5.10 ramakoon kernel the build maintainer is of course joe we have the build date as 22nd august 2023 and the silicon exterior shows as enforcing in the system settings this is how it looks like we have the system updated you can check for updates this is the latest update as of right now so it's not showing any updates updates and here in the gesture settings we have the quick tap action and stuff you can turn it on and these are the options for the quick tap or the back tap let me go back we have the quickly open camera that works fine we have the system navigation gestures in the settings of it we do have the advanced gestures and these are the options for it let me go back we have the pill length and radius customization and this is how it looks like with the fullest of both and we have the IME button space you can change it to narrow or hidden and I have been using it with the default one the swipe to invoke assistant is also working perfectly fine no problems the left edge right edge customization and the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture can be customized we have the two button and three button navigation and one handed mode should work perfectly fine and we have the press and hold power button action double tap and this is the swipe to screenshot that too is working perfectly fine no problems we have the share edit delete and the google lens feature as well and we have the playback control and the prevent ringing now that's all about the system settings right now let me talk about the home screen this is how my home screen looks like i have been using the fresh walls apps wallpaper but you can use any wallpaper of course and the widgets are actually working let me show you this is the like battery widget that too is working fine sometimes i would say the battery widget as you can see right now it's connected to this bluetooth device but it's not showing up but most of the time it does show up let me just like toggle on bluetooth again and hopefully it will show up so as you can see right now the bluetooth battery shows up so yeah the bluetooth battery widget the clock widget and stuff everything should be working fine even the subscriber count widget that i have added is working perfectly fine it also shows the like bluetooth battery over here too if you want that to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page and swiping up will get you to the app drawer and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel and the 120 hertz and stuff everything is working flawlessly no problems even in the quick setting panel it's a very smooth experience right now and even the app drawer it's perfectly smooth no problems whatsoever even while scrolling through the ui in case you are wondering about the stock launcher of course this is the evolution x launcher still present on this rom and it has huge amount of customization let me show you in the miscellaneous settings we have the use taskbar allow home screen rotation background blur depth and the hidden and protected apps restart option is still there we can disable the suggestions if you want and we have the recent customization in here we get the memory info the screenshot the google lens the clear all shake phone to clear all tasks and even the background opacity you can change so this is how it looks like looks really really beautiful and it's very smooth experience even in the recent panel on the bottom you can see the ram usage status you have the screenshot the google lens clear all and you can go into the split screen or the field form mode from right here in the app drawer we have the themed icons app search bar icon labels in drawer and the row height background opacity etc in the home screen settings we have the add app icons to the home screen double tap to sleep and even the wallpaper scrolling and zooming and the parallax and the single pin center everything is there and the google kind of customization is there we have the music search and stuff you can enable it if you want let me go to the icons in here we have the icon pack changing option the icon size font size and the max lines for app level and the four themed icons you can change so that's all about the customization now let me talk about the stock camera well you are getting this particular like camera right out of the box and this is the latest Leica camera the version 5 so that's really good and in this particular build it has been updated to the even latest one I would say and in the settings of it we have bunch of settings you need to enable this enable lab option and the beta settings right here and just enable this portrait mode fix and just restart the app that's how you can get the rear camera portrait mode working right now as you can see let me switch to the portrait mode and if you're noticing the portrait mode is right now working perfectly fine i'll show you the examples but let me tell you the front camera portrait mode selfies and stuff will not work if you switch to the front camera it will show the camera is forced closing in three seconds or something like that so yeah that's how it is but normal photo mode the front camera is working fine so for taking selfies and stuff it's perfectly fine but let me tell you the optimization is not close to me why at all 
So even today, the optimization is not that good when compared to MIUI that I have to say. In the video mode, let me show you. This is how the settings looks like. Right now, you can shoot again up to 1080p. There is no 4K option available yet, but you can shoot 1080p 60fps videos if you want. So that's good. And there is the pro mode as well. You can switch to that if you want to shoot videos or photos in the pro mode. The documents mode, I have tested it. It is working fine with the enhancement stuff. It opens a separate gallery kind of. So that's how it is. And here, let me show you, if you just swipe up, you will get the like other options, the vlog, short film, time lapse, and the sticker avatars, movie effects, long exposure clone, and the director mode as well. And you can edit them out from right here. So this is good. Now let me show you some of the examples. This is a selfie that I took in low light and in indoor lighting condition, of course. And here, I would say, if you just zoom in, you will see it doesn't have good amount of detail. It's a little bit like hazy and it has noise and stuff. So that's how it is in this particular camera and it is a 16 megapixel photo but still I would say the quality is not that great or the optimization is not that great in low light. Now with the rear camera this is with the portrait mode and here you will see the background book and stuff everything worked perfectly I would say. So the background blood and stuff with the rear camera portrait mode is working but if your hands are shaky it will be coming out I mean the pictures will be coming out a little bit shaky so do be careful about that and here this is a normal rear camera photo worked perfectly fine if you zoom in there is ample amount of details no issues whatsoever you can see every little text over here of this zoom h1 and stuff and here let me show you the next picture this is again with the rear camera it has really good amount of details no issues so far and this is in like good lighting condition even in indoors but still i would say i have like three turned on led tube lights so with that as you can see the details are like very very good with this so if you have really good amount of light even the front camera selfies will come out really good but yes if i zoom in i can see the details are good and here again this is a 16 megapixel photo and for rear camera if you are wondering how much is the resolution this is again a 16 megapixel photo so those are working perfectly fine no issues so with this particular camera i would say it's better than having no leica camera that's pretty sure you can also use the gcams and stuff if you want still no issues with those so that's enough about the camera now let's talk about the basic things of this rom the drm4 still stays as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p the ir blaster still works perfectly fine so no problems with the remote control stuff yes the safety net shows as failed over here but do not worry the banking apps i have set it up everything from like icici to sbi apps everything is working perfectly fine including with the upi app like Google Pay, Amazon Pay, everything is working perfectly on this ROM, no problem so far. And we still do have the Google Photos and Videos unlimited backup, so this is a really nice feature to have. Talking about customizations, I have showed you this particular part multiple amount of times, you can just watch them. It still has amazing amount of customization, including with the lock screen, clock fonts and stuff, everything is there, no issues whatsoever, there are like hundreds of the clock styles and you will just have amazing amount of customizations over here. It still has the game space and stuff, all those things. And you can customize the color of the monitor theme engine and stuff. Everything is still there. Let's just switch to the battery settings. And we have the optimization profile right here. So per app, you can just change it to performance, browser, camera, dialer, etc. options. I did change it to the performance mode in the like benchmarking apps and stuff. And here we have the battery charge warning, battery optimization, power app you can do. And we have the design battery capacity, current battery capacity, the charging cycles and the temperature. Right now, as you can see, I have went through about 109 charging cycles. So my battery is getting a little bit old. Here, let me show you with the Aku battery app. The battery life that I have got here is about eight hours and 37 minutes, which may not look great, but yes, my usage, a lot of heavy usage and the standby or the screen off time is about 45 hours. The combined use shows as 14 hours for me, but definitely if you are a normal user, it will last you a whole long day, no issues whatsoever. The battery life is good enough that I have to say. In the health section for me, the battery health shows up as 96%, which is I would say decent. And even the fast charging here is actually working perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever with it. In the sound settings, this is how it looks like. We have the ringtone and stuff changing option, of course. Vibration and haptics for the whole UI, you can customize the ringtone vibration pattern you can change. If you scroll down more, we have the power app volume control, dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sound and vibration. Silent media mute option is there. There is some Mi sound enhancer or the Mi audio Dirac and it has this Dirac logo, looks beautiful. We have the smart scene mode, then the headphone preset choosing option. 
I have been using it with a youth edition, but you can use it with anyone. Sound quality via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well should be fine. We have this choose preset option as well. You can use it if you want. Enable hi-fi mode is also there. Also, there is the clear speaker mode. And let me show you the volume panel normally looks like this. You can switch to the output device to the speakers and stuff. And you can like adjust the volume and stuff from right here. And normally you can expand the volume panel just like this. You can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here. Once you're playing music, it shows up like this in the quick setting panel. It has this ripple kind of effect. And you can again expand the volume from here. I mean the output device and playing and pausing music. This is how it looks like. And here, let me show you in the lock screen. This is how it looks again. You can change this like album art stuff. You can make it colored, I guess, in the customization settings. Talking about the quick setting panel, we have the Wi-Fi, mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle and the flashlight, auto rotate, nightlight, hotspot, Google Home controls, the battery saver and the screen recorder still has amazing amount of features. We have the data saver, dark theme, extra dim, always on display, toggling option and the ambient display, heads up, the refresh rate. I have been using the refresh rate at auto and we have the reboot, do not disturb, nearby share, airplane mode and the screencast. Then we have the advanced reboot option as well. You can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. But even when you have the dark theme disabled, then also the quick setting panel stays dark in this particular room, which I personally do not like, but this is how it is. And the Bluetooth battery status and stuff, everything shows up. This HD icon in the signal icon actually means it has Volti. And let me show you the 5G and stuff, everything shows up right here. The 5G speeds and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine. You do not need to worry about it. Also, it has the Google kind of phone dialer and it also has the call recording option and stuff, but it does announce it in the call. So that's how it is. But it does have the other features of the Google dialer and you can switch the output device again from here. No issues with those. In the display settings, this is how it looks like. We have the brightness level, adaptive brightness, extra dim, the lock screen kind of customization. In here, when swiping up option is there for the face unlock and stuff. And we have the control from lock device, the shortcuts you can actually change from right here. I'll show you the wallpapers and styles later. We have the double line clock. Always prime info is the always on display. You can turn it on if you want. We have the ambient display. Then in the advanced settings, we do have the pulse notification on pickup. So the pickup gesture will be working fine. Let me go back and we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes and then screen saver, display size and text, live display and the colors you can change it to boosted automatic etc. And there are amazing amount of options like the P3 sRGB etc. So if you're curious about the color changing option, all those things are there. Allow window will blurs are there and the minimum and maximum refresh rate you can change from right here. We have the smooth display then the low power refresh rate. I'll just say put it to 60 hertz only and we have the double tap to wake, prevent external wake up, wake up on plug, full screen apps and the refresh rate per app. We can and only change it to like 60 to 120 hertz there is no 90 hertz option in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like in the change wallpaper settings we have this feathers and the live wallpapers of the emojis and stuff and there are the evolution access papers app if you want that we have the 16 colors for the basic and wallpaper colors the dark theme you can enable the themed icons are there and we have the system icon packs the fonts etc changing option and amazing amount of font options are there like huge huge amount of font customization is there you can just choose any one that you'd like icons and stuff you can change in the security settings let me show you there is a quick unlock the scramble pin layout power button instantly locks and the enable pin privacy option also in the more settings you do get the app lock still and let me tell you i have already completed the face unlock and fingerprint setup but in the fingerprint settings you do get this touch to unlock anytime if you don't want your device to wake up accidentally whenever you touch the fingerprint scanner you can just disable this particular feature right now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed and stuff and for that let me just double tap and here it, the phone just goes to sleep and here if i just tap the fingerprint scanner it wakes up perfectly fine if you want to enable the always on display let me show you this is how the always on display will look like it looks beautiful and we have the clock and this is how it looks like in the like lock screen and if you just double tap it will wake up of course and the shortcuts are actually working fine you have to tap and hold on them and right now as you can see the shortcuts are working in controls yeah they are working perfectly fine and the torch and stuff everything is working fine no issues so far and again with the lock screen if i just tap the fingerprint scanner this is how it looks like the animation and even from the always on display this is how it will look when I'm locking and unlocking the device with the fingerprint scanner. And here, let me just show you the face unlock. And for that, I need to swipe up on the lock screen. And as you can see, it shows recognizing face and it unlocks. Let me try one more time. I'm just swiping up. And as you can see, the face unlock is very fast, works perfectly fine. And the app lock looks like this, I mean the UI. And if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it just goes straight where I left the app. So yeah, the RAM management and stuff, everything is super fine over here. Now let me show you the app related things. And here, 
if I just open the Chrome and as you can see in the test of website, we are getting 120 FPS. So 120 Hertz is actually working perfectly. No problems or you do not need to worry about the high refresh rate on this ROM. And of course, this is Poco A5. It has the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. It handles 120 FPS like straight knife on the border and it's just very smooth experience overall. Even in Twitter or X, sorry, <laughs> and here I'm just scrolling. Just notice how smoothly it scrolls no problems so far as you can see it's just buttery smooth experience there is no lag or stutters at all while scrolling through twitter or even scroll like switching between apps and stuff it's a very smooth experience no issues whatsoever even in instagram if i go into the reels section as you can see i can just scroll through them very fast experience and even if i swipe to the left side the front camera with instagram is working the rear camera with Instagram, it's working perfectly fine. So yeah, all those things and all those features will be working. And if I just enable these filters and stuff, I do not have them downloaded, but yeah, as you can see, it's just switching to it right away. So no issues with the, like switching between apps and stuff. And with daily driving performance, you won't be having any issues on this ROM that I can see. And here are the Antutan Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you guys an idea about the overall UI performance. And the brightness slider actually is perfectly fixed. I had the extra dim turned on all along, but yeah, I just turned it off. And here, the brightness, as you can see with the brightness slider, goes really, really dim. And if you just turn it up, it goes really, really bright. This device has a really bright AMOLED display and it shows the colors are beautiful looking. So yeah, no issues with the like brightness slider right now. Everything is just perfectly working on this particular ROM, except the MIUI or Leica camera optimization which might be fixed in the future updates. Right now, this device does not have the full kernel source released and everyone is requesting Poco to release the full kernel sources and it needs the OSS vendor some kind of, I have no knowledge of developing ROMs and stuff. So I cannot tell you about that, but definitely it needs some kind of vendor to actually get the MIUI camera to work perfectly and everything to be working perfectly. But even today, I would say this particular ROM, I can totally daily drive it and I have been daily driving it on this particular ROM and my experience has been good, but I do miss the MIUI camera optimization if you ask me personally. But for a normal user, if you don't care about the camera too much, it will be really good daily driver experience if you love stock Android with a little bit of customization here and there. So that's what I think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if you want them to know how the Evolution X ROM is actually holding up on the Poco A5. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it again. And subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.